Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ishan Behar. I'm back again. And today we'll be discussing more of the CT findings that will make a huge benefit for you in the cath lab. For example, what is the aortic angulation? How this will be very hard or an easy procedure for you if you have an aortic angulation and what are the numbers that we go by? And the other thing is that the how to look for any of the thrombi inside the heart, like the left atrial appendage, the LV, and also how to look in the LV shape and how this will implicate the placement of your wire and the manual shaping of your wire if you're using the manual stiff wires. And lastly, we'll look at the aortic uh, valve itself and the design of the calcification and if there's a porcelain aorta or not. We will end with the uh, angle of implantation and um, uh, after this we will move on in the next episode uh, for the vascular axis. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you haven't seen the previous episodes please check the link above, uh, pause the video, go see them and then come back so that we can be together. Thank you so much and off we go. So first of all we start with resetting everything that we start from and then we scroll on the uh, right window at the blue window you scroll up and down until you find the lvot the aortic valve and the aorta are in continuity and then we go down with the crosshairs over there and actually we just remove the axis get from the upper left top the angulation and then we choose on the right side or at the uh, cusp that we see the, which is the left coronary cusp and the non coronary cusp and then the other line is the line parallel to the horizon so here we get an angle of 45 degrees so we get the x again to make sure that the baseline that we have chose to parallel to the horizon is actually parallel to like this so this is a, an angle of a 45 degrees so actually what we have as a horizontal aorta is what you get from a 47 degrees up to a 70 degree so above then 70 degrees this is not a favorable axis to um, do a TAVI through a femoral approach and especially for those with the self-expandable valves so in in, in a steerable uh, delivery system like the Edwards and the balloon uh, expandable valves are better so that you can get the actual uh, an active flexion that can make you uh, go into this uh, horizontal aorta which is better so this is one of the things that we discussed and then we go to the next one which is the intercardiac thrombi. So we remove it, press reset again and then we scroll down until we see that the uh, left atrium is appearing. So as you can see when I'm scrolling I'm always looking at the um, uh, sagittal section at the blue window and here you can see that the left atrium is over there as you can see and we have the left atrial appendage we go at the left atrial appendage and try to be parallel to it. And as you can see here at the cross-sectional segment on the purple window, you can see that this is the finger-like projection, which is the left atrial appendage. If I just swipe to it, then it will prevail predominantly on the window, on the uh, on the blue window, and you can see it's clear and there is no there is no thrombi in it. So here we just have seen the left atrial appendage, as you can see on the purple window and on the um, uh, blue window. So after seeing this, also you can see here, this is the coronarius and you can see there is calcification in the coronary artery over here. We can see it as well, but we will never uh, be able to see the stenosis with this calcification. So we have to do a coronary angiography as we're going to see. Then we press reset again. And now this is the LV and now we have to see on the LV two things. First of all, that is free from any thrombi, as you can see over here. So I get my cross earrings on the uh, yellow wind, uh, on the blue window, get over there and then try to be to see the apex. So what I did is that I, I rotated the uh, blue crosshairs and it elongated the apex at the blue window. And I can see here that I can see the whole apex and if I rotate it like this I will go through this is like the uh, as you can see on the purple you can see that um, this is the um, 
a three chamber view in the echocardiography. This is the left atrium, the LV, and the aorta, and it's also free from any thrombi. Zoom out a little bit. And now is the practical thing that I told you about. You have to look how big is the LV. This is really important to see because your stiff wire will be going on the outer curvature and it will be landing in the LV. As you can see here, the LV is globular and actually it has a very small cavity. And this means that you need to do the stiff wire in a very, uh, and a very small curve so that it will be resting at the LV in a very good manner. So basically those are the things that you need to uh, be aware of, and this is why you need to look at the CT. And the other thing is that we have to go now and see the aortic calcification. So what we're going to do is that you get the cross hearings and go and now we're moving at the yellow window. So you get the cross hearings and you go at the aortic valve. And as you can see over at yeah. the blue window right now on the right, this is the aortic calcification. And I can tell you from here is that what we need is we only have a very small calcifications at the leaflet tips and there is a very minimal at the body. So in this case, we would not need to do a pre-dilatation in case that we're using a self-expandable evolute. However, in the Boston, I can you, it's important to do a pre-dilatation for, for every case. So this is how we assess. If you can see that the whole uh, leaflet is filled with calcium, then you need a pre-dilatation in order to make sure that the entrance of the delivery system is easy. And finally, we're going to reset everything. So now we're going to see the angle of implantation, and this is the last thing that we're going to do in this video. So what we're going to do is that we have to mark three dots at the nadirs. Oh. So what I did is that I choose from here the point, and I press on the one point over here, I remove the axis. So I removed, so what I did is one point over there, remove this a little bit, another point over here, and another point over there at the right coronary cluster. So this is basically what I did. So now I can see that there are three dots at the nadirs of each of the cusps. Now I marked the, th the three cusps. And once I enlarge them, I can change the colors of them. So now I'm going to change this color into a green one. This is what I my, one of my favorite ones. And this is the right coronary. And this one is yellow. Click, choose the color, change it to yellow. And the last one, which is the left, is going to be red. So as you can see here, now we got the three colors, which is the, the right, which corresponds to the right coronary cusps. The left is the none, and the red is the uh, uh, left. So the aim of this maneuver is to know an angle that will show us the three dots at the same level. In order to do so, and it will appear down there. So at this, this is an LAO of 14 and the cranial of 1. So this is our co-planner view. At this view, this is where the three cusps are equidistant from each other and at the same level. So what if I want to get the cusp overlap view? So if I want to get the cusp overlap view, I rotate until I get the th the the green and the red overriding each other. I'm moving this line and seeing the blue window. As you can see here, both of the dots are at the same time. And here you can get an REO of nine and a codal of 17. So this is basically the angle of implantation. So now we finished all this, the, the things that we, we were discussing and we will move on in, to the vascular axis. So what we're going to do is going, I'm going to reset everything because I did it before. However, if you press the reset button over there, nothing will change. So what you actually need to do is that you have to delete it. So you press on the basket over there, press delete, and then delete the curve. And when you delete the curve, this is what you get. So the curve with NPR, you need to trace the femorals, and we can do, and we're going to do this by going down we're scrolling down on the purple window 
scroll down 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 until I get the femoral head when I see the femoral head I focus I enlarge this a little bit zoom in and then I focus on the right side I go down 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 until I see the bifurcation and as you can see this bifurcation into two the SFA and the profunda the profunda goes deep early into the muscles and the SFA starts to be superficial all through and I start here uh, choosing on the up the dots and I start to mark it and like this I remove the axis in order to be easy for me and then scroll up another dot scroll up another dot scroll up again and start it and you can see on the right side down bottom it starts to delineate the artery and go through here 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 and because you can see it curved back and go up again this is the union and here is the abdominal aorta and go up I can see the renals and that's how it looks so I enlarge on the right side as you can see there are two places which are not accurate because maybe the line was not central at this as you can see here now I can see that the line was not central I add another dot over here and I drag it into the middle right there maybe drag it more in order to centralize it and this one as well drag it into the center I scroll and I make sure that they are centered once I've done this I can enlarge that and start to see everything clearly so here we need another dot and stretch it over there and the most important thing is that you have to get the relation between the bifurcation and the femoral head and as you can see here the bifurcation is at the lower third of the femoral head so our aim to the puncture is going to be at the middle or the upper third of the femoral head and also I need to and we are doing this in the active side so this is A so that measures the first image and here we're going to measure the average diameter so here it's 9.45 by 9 so an average of 9.25 and if I'm going to do a, um, any maneuvers at the femorals I have to get a backup with a graft stance in order because as you all know that the vascular axis is one of the important uh, complications that may, we may face in the TAVI so the most important thing is to get and prepare a graft stance of 9.5 or 10 and then I scroll all the way to see if we have a minimum diameter of less than 5.5 because as you remember our um, um, valve is going to be at 29 and I can see no any abnormalities over there so the most important thing else is that one of the important things is that you can see over here there's calcification and I have to be, when I do my puncture, I have to be apart away from the calcification so that the proglides will not fail. So I have a, a bit of tortuosity as well. And the maximum tortuosity is basically a 260 degrees angle successive to each other. So we have here an angle of 90 and here another angle so this is a bit of uh, tortuosity, so if there is no calcification, so I would try with just a stiff wire and maybe this, this tortuosity will um, straighten. So uh, thank you so much. I think this is the end of our uh, CT analysis. And the next video will be with the actual uh, implantation and we'll see what we have done. Thank you so much for watching. <music>